So um, everybody, welcome to uh, another Novice 2 class. This one is Intro to um, Camping SCA Style. And uh, although we call it SCA Style, a lot of the stuff that you're going to hear about today is stuff that you would use in um, mundane camping as well. So um, a lot of them transfer back and forth. Uh, there's just different ways of camouflaging stuff when you're in the SCA that, that helps make your camp more authentic. So um, the first thing I want to make clear is that this is not a packing list. Um, there's numerous packing lists available online uh, and you can easily adapt them to work for you. Um, this is just uh, a class to give you some ideas on how to enjoy and survive the experience. And uh, in fact, uh, Tanique has a wonderful packing list. She's got any extra information that you don't get from me, uh, you can get from her. She has a lot more detailed information than you'll get in this class. And we've actually amalgamated our classes together to get one sheet for, for um, you guys tonight. So um, rule number one, there's obviously rules in camping. So rule number one is um, your planning and, and packing. So uh, I like to say that you follow the scout motto of be prepared. Uh, planning ahead is the best way to ensure that you're well prepared, uh, that you have everything that you need, that you don't forget anything. And um, it helps you once you get on site and you start unpacking and you see everything coming together, it just makes the whole experience much more enjoyable for you. Um, if you are prepared for our ever-changing weather on the BC coast, uh, you won't care if you're getting wind, snow, rain, or sun, uh, you'll be able to handle everything as long as you've done good planning and had a good packing list with you. Um, which means that rule number two is have a list uh, and then another list and possibly more lists after that. Um, I tend to have uh, lists for different things. So I might have, uh, what do I need for my clothing? What do I need for my kitchen? What do I need for my camp setup? And then I have my big list that all of this goes under. So um, you'll find that your list change or can change event to event. Um, maybe you didn't need uh, that big feather bed that you strapped to the top of your mini Morris, uh, but you could have used an extra tarp because of the rain that came down. So um, as you're making your list, you're, you're trying to prepare for every possible scenario, uh, but then you get to the event and you realize, oh, shoot, I didn't have that, or I could have used this, or I brought this and I didn't need it. So your packing lists and your generalized lists are very fluid. They can be constantly changing until you get to a point where you've got it down pat. This is everything you need. You've done it a million times and uh, Bob's your uncle. You don't need to change that list anymore. Um, your lists are supposed to ensure that nothing gets left behind, but it pays to double check while you're packing. So you've got your tent, yes. Well, do I have the poles for my tent? Do I have extra stakes for my tent? Do I have the hammer to pop the stakes into the ground? So, um, you know, make sure that if you have tent on your list, that you also have all the accruements that go with the tent. Um, ticking things off as you pack them uh, is a really good way than driving away with your cot still left in your driveway. So um, the, you, you want to make sure that You've got to, the way I do it is I bring everything out to the driveway. I've double checked my list. And then as I put it in the car, I check it off my list. And that way I ensure that, yeah, I brought the camp stove, but I also have the fuel that goes with the stove. And uh, yeah, I've got the, um, the uh, camp kitchen, but yes, I've also got the 
uh, the dishwashing soap and the rags and everything else that I need to go with it. Um, so every main list has a sub list of stuff underneath it. And I know it sounds like a lot of work, but it pays off in the long run to do that. Check, double check, all the parts and pieces. Um, so if you have a good master list, it's easy to adapt that master list for each camping event that you attend because every event that you attend is going to be different. So going to a day event is going to be different than going to a two day event, which again will be different than going to a war or uh, even Pensick, for example, which is, geez, I can't, I can't remember how long Pensick is. I think it's three, two weeks or three weeks, something like that. Anybody know? Two weeks. There you go. So two weeks. Two weeks. So you can you can pack uh, your main list for it, it can be adapted for anywhere from a short one day overnighter event to a two week event. So you're like I said earlier, your list is very very fluid. Um, when you are making your list, there are things that you should be checking with the event steward. A lot of times they have information posted on the um, uh, on the kingdom calendar. So you might need to know, hey, do they have potable water at this event or am I having to bring water with me? Um, some people take water regardless, but it's good to know if you have that little mini Morris and you're packing for th three days, if you can get about packing water in your car, obviously that leaves your room for more food or another outfit. So um, always check on the kingdom calendar for the for the information on the site, uh, whether it's dog friendly, if you have a dog. Uh, and if so, what are the rules? Are they on a leash all the time? So then you're adding to your list. Oh, yeah, I got to have a leash. I got to have my dog food. I got to have my water for my dog. Um, the web, the kingdom calendar will also tell you things like um, washroom availability, uh, if they're porta potties. Some, a lot of sites will have both uh, porta potties and a regular washroom. And so, um, if you are somebody that gets up at two, three, four o'clock in the morning all the time and need to run to the washroom, uh, you might need to know if it's better to have your own little potty that you bring with you. And if so, that goes in your packing list. And then of course your toilet paper and disposal methods. So um, if you have that good master list, you can adapt it any way you need to for whatever kind of event you attend. Um, it's also really handy to have bins and boxes that are designated for certain things. Um, a kitchen is a really good example of that. Uh, we have friends, Edelheid and I have friends, uh, Thorwolf and Wolfwin, who have a beautiful kitchen set up for their camp. And they have designated uh, wooden boxes that uh, they keep specifically for their kitchen and it's packed year round. And a really good way to keep things like that organized is uh, you have a list on the lid of your specified box. So for them, their kitchen box, you open it up and there's a list taped to it with everything that, that belongs in that box. So when they pack that box up at camp, they know everything that's going back in the box because there's a list there. Nothing ever gets left behind. Um, so it's handy to do that with uh, if you have a kitchen box, if you have a, uh, a personal box. So maybe you want to make sure you've got a roll of toilet paper and you need your sunscreen and you need your this, that, and the next thing, and you have a little personal box. Using Tupperware bins, wooden boxes, whether it's for your kitchen or your personal gear or even your 
your tents, that kind of thing, makes for really easy packing in your car. Um, if you've got boxes, they're labeled and the, ingre uh, the ingredients, like I'm cooking a cake, the ingredients are listed on the box. It makes your whole packing experience work much better for you. The more organized you are, the better experience you're going to have. Um, when you're at an event and you discovered that there was something that you would have really liked to have had there, but you didn't, you just add that to your list for next time. Or like I say, you, you go, hey, I really didn't need that feather bed. You take that off your list for the next time. Um, if you find that you've packed something two, three, four, five times because you think you're going to need it and you've never used it, just get rid of it. Take it off your list. Chances are you're not going to need it. Um, and again, uh, that really good tip is don't tick off your list until you've actually packed that item in your car. Um, I have a rule number three, and it is plan your menu and your meals in advance. Uh, a lot of people don't check, uh, you know, oh, there's going to be a grocery store nearby or a gas station nearby where I can get something or a restaurant, whatever. And there's just nothing worse than getting on site and finding out that the nearest place you can go to get food is 30 miles away because you're out in the Thule's. So um, this is information again that will always be uh, with the event steward and the event copy. So this I will impress upon you again to go to the Kingdom website calendar and find out who the event steward is, find out if they have a Facebook page uh, where you can get all the information about the site. Um, so before you go, you want to plan your menu. This includes uh, your meals, your snacks, your drinks. How are you cooking it? How are you disposing of leftovers? Uh, one of the best camping tips ever, and you see it all over the place, is do as much prep as possible in advance. Um, Pre-make your pancake batter. Um, you can crack your eggs in advance and have them in baggies. Um, I like to eliminate as much packing garbage as possible before I go to an event. So I don't want to take my pepperoni, for example, in the plastic packaging that it comes in. I take everything out, I unwrap everything, and I repackage it, whether I put it in uh, Tupperware or baggies. I just leave the, the as much packaging as possible at home because whatever you take into your campsite, you also have to take out and you wanna be conscious of the garbage that you have with you. So I try to eliminate as much of that as possible before I even leave the house. Um, there's so many other things to do at an event. Uh, and unless you're the camp cook, uh, making your meals as easy as possible is a really good time saver. Um, we like to make soups and chilies, uh, stews, things like that in advance. So we'll put big pots of stuff on here and then we'll divvy it up and, and put it in freezer bags so that uh, they serve two purposes. They serve as extra coolant in the cooler when we pack them. Uh, they stay fresher because it takes them a while to defrost and uh, they make super easy heat and serve meals. There's no prep involved. All the prep's been done before we've left. Um, remember for health reasons uh, to pre-cook and or freeze any poultry, fish, pork or ground meat that you intend to take um, and freeze a couple of water containers uh, because they also help bring coldness into your cooler. And as it unthaws, of course, you have nice cold water to drink. Um, a really good tip about your cooler is to only put pre-chilled items in there. You don't want to put 
uh, warm stuff because then it takes time for that to cool down. So if you pre-chill everything before it goes in your cooler, that's really helpful. Uh, it starts it out as a cold environment. Um, and seal absolutely everything. I'm a huge plastic baggy person um, because nothing gets soggy. You know, as things melt, you always get that kind of stuff on the bottom of your cooler. Uh, so I, I try to make sure that everything is sealed and uh, you don't get any dampness on them. Um, Tanique had a really good tip about putting a little baking soda in the bottom of your cooler uh, because that will prevent odors. And um, she called it uh, bacteria soup in the water that collects at the very bottom of your cooler. Um, just remember that your fridge food needs to be at four degrees Celsius or lower for um, food safe to be, so you don't get sick. Last thing you wanna do is get food poisoning when you're out camping. So um, they have little uh, refrigerator thermometer things that you can actually tape to the lid of your cooler and that will help you keep a real good eye on the temperature of your cooler. Um, when you have your cooler at an event, uh, put something over it or put it in the shade, put it under a table, under a bench, uh, just keep it out of the sun. Uh, you obviously don't open it 100,000 times a day and don't leave it standing open. You know, just know what you're going for, open it up, get it and close it right away. Um, Plastic bags and cardboard boxes are not adequate food storage if there's a potential of wildlife in the camping area. So um, there would be nothing worse than waking up in the morning and seeing all your snacks thrown about the entire campground and some raccoon is laying there with a full belly. So um, don't try not to uh, have open cardboard boxes and bags for your food at an event. Try uh, uh, things with lids, so Rubbermaid containers, your cooler, obviously. Um, just don't leave food lying about. It's, it's unhealthy and it just attracts wildlife. So unless you wanna get woken up from the bear. That's a really good tip, Robin. Uh, you can also pre-chill the cooler itself. Yeah, exactly. So you're starting out with that cold environment right away. And that's a real bonus for uh, keeping everything cold for a longer period of time. Um, always, like, like I said earlier, you take away what you bring in. So when you're thinking about um, trying to eliminate garbage, nobody's going to provide garbage bags for you. So make sure you take at least one heavy duty garbage bag per day of uh, your camping event um, and tie it up at the end of the day. Don't, don't, re, don't open it up and reuse it the next day. Um, a lot of sites will, when you're at gate and you're going to an event, they'll say, they'll let you know where the garbage is so you can dispose of it uh, at the end of each day. Um, but in case they don't, you're going to want to keep it in your car or somewhere where wildlife aren't going to get to it or where it won't smell. So you want to make sure you tie those off real good at the end of each day and either put it in your car to keep it out of the way or take it to wherever the garbage site is uh, at the event. Um, I take way too many of everything. So I always have lots of garbage bags. I just don't ever think you can have too many. Um, Tanique has a full article available to anyone uh, after class, you can ask her about it. Uh, about a full article about nothing but camp kitchens. So um, if anyone's interested, you can always uh, connect with Tanique afterwards. Make sure that you have plenty of water, more than you think you'll need. Um, even if there's potable water on site, always make sure you've got water in your camp at all times. Uh, 
dehydration is a real thing, especially in the summers here. Um, and I can't stress upon you how important it is to have water in your campsite. Uh, whether you get one of those big jugs and the little pump that goes on top or whatever you do, um, make sure you've got a lot of water. Um, remember when you're thinking about what you're cooking, how are you cooking it? So do you need pots and pans? Do you need utensils? Do you need matches? Uh, what are they allowing on site? Are they allowing an open fire? Do I need a grill? Uh, is it propane only? Okay, that means I need a camp stove. Uh, you want to make sure you've got uh, everything that you need to cook your food. And the only way you'll know for sure how you're going to cook it, if you were thinking of open fire, is to check on that uh, event page and the event copy and find out what, what is going on at the campsite. Um, any questions so far? Kind of weird just talking to the <laughs> talking to the names. So I don't know if you guys are bored or if you have any questions. So no, feel it's funny. I'm laughing along with you. I'm like, ha ha ha, that's a good idea. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but you can't hear us. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're just excited to go camping one day. Well, and we will do that, my darling. <laughs> my, my my little thug wife. Yeah, thug wife. <laughs> <laughs> um when we'll talk a little bit about packing your car <laughs> so and you guys probably all are, all know this most people have common sense when you're packing your car you want the large heavy items at the bottom and as balanced over your wheels as possible so that your car isn't you know going down the road like the beverly hillbillies which we've looked that way sometimes so um if you use one of those car top carriers make sure it's centered over the vehicle and only put your lightest items up there you wouldn't want to put you wouldn't want to put all the heavy stuff up there it'll be left on the highway at some point for sure um remember your health when you're packing um so there's a lot of things you need to consider uh do you need medication? Um, does your medication need to be kept cold? Um, whatever you have for medication, remember to pack it in baggies uh, in case of rain or spillage. Um, they make some really funky, neat little ice packs now for medication that are foldable and uh, thin. They're not big, big fat things that take up a ton of room. Um, it's always really handy to put a list of medications in your wallet in case of emergencies. And I, I, that's a really important thing for people. If, if something happened to you and at, a, at an event and you had to be rushed to the hospital, it's really good for them to have information about you that the person taking you might not know. So if you are on medication, just keep a little list in your wallet uh, and, and, just for your own safety. Um, something really important to consider when SCA camping is your ability to move around. So if you have a disability, uh, remember that there's always people to help you unload and people to help you set up and pack back up again. Uh, lots of nights have squires just waiting to be told what to do. And SCA people are generally uh, helium hand people anyway. So if you need help, don't hesitate to ask for help. If the person you're asking can't, they're most likely going to say, I can't, but I'll find somebody for you. So um, that's really important that you never feel like you can't ask for help. There's a lot of us are getting old and creaky, uh, so we need that help. Um, but with that being said, nothing can replace uh, the handiness of having those great Costco wagons uh, that collapse. They don't take up a lot of room when you pack them, but they 
they are worth their weight in gold when you're you know making 3000 trips back and forth to your car so those wagons are i really recommend them to anybody um and it's we like to say don't pack for a month for a two day event um but uh <laughs> we all overpack and uh you'll see every SCA car bulging at the seams no matter how long the event is so we 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 over overpack for everything i think um you got to consider your budget so you'll see are all of you like can you do a something a hand up or something have all of you been to an sca camping event or camped at all oh kelly yes I mean, we've camped, just not in an event, okay. not yet. Okay. Same here. Uh, been to one event uh, at CA and have camped before, but never the two together. Okay. Margaret? I'm experienced in camping. I'm going to my first event on Saturday, so I'm in the process of packing. <laughs> oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> in New Hampshire. In New Hampshire. Well, that is even nicer. And Husa, is that how you pronounce it? Husa? And we know Tanique has definitely been. Uh, she's a camping expert. She, it's her jam right now. So, once uh, or twice. <laughs> so, um, Nobody really cares if you have a mundane tent. Everyone dreams of having the big, beautiful pavilions with the beautiful painted decor all over them and everything 100% authentic. It's never going to happen the first few times you go camping and uh, don't feel bad that you have a mundane tent or that you have mundane camping chairs or whatever you have don't feel bad about it we everyone starts at a basic point and some people get right into it and they sink all their money into making these lovely beautiful campsites for the rest of us to uh to uh admire from afar but there are ways and you you might build up to that at some point yourself too um but there's lots of ways that you can take your whatever you have that you camp with right now and and make it a little more SCA friendly. So um, I have seen uh, and Theodora has done this, uh, Heidi. She I've seen people take uh, an umbrella and they've made a tent out of it and it looks super authentic because they just drape fabric over the umbrella and it, and it costs next to nothing. They just paid for the fabric. And, uh, and it was really awesome to see that happen so quickly, like just boom, there was this really cool little tent. Um, pop-ups are the same. I, everybody's got the pop-ups for shade and all it takes is wrapping a little fabric around the uh, legs or even draping fabric over the top. I think I've even seen a uh, painted pop-up where they have painted the scallops and stuff along the edges uh, of the, uh, if it were a red pop-up, for example, they would use white fabric paint and they're just gorgeous and very at very little expense. So um, there's numerous ways to camouflage. Uh, draping, uh, draping fabric over your camp chairs. You know, well, you're going to use those camp chairs when you go mundane camping. So why not have them do double duty? And just you can even uh, there's patterns all over the internet about how to make the slip-on uh, chair covers for the camp chairs. So um, all those things will make you feel more like you're in the SCA camping experience and they don't cost a lot of money to do 
and they're super simple. And um, I think there's different sites on Pinterest actually that focus on, on SCA uh, camping. And so how can I make my, my camp more authentic on a budget? So um, stay within your means. Don't feel pressured to sink a small fortune into your camp set up all at once unless you win the lottery and that's what you choose to do. Uh, most of us uh, build our camps slowly over time and we learn as we go what's most important to us. Okay, so everybody clear on that? Don't blow your food money on your camp. Yes, Kelly, you have a hand. I'm sorry, I must be clicking something or whatever. I, I'm not meaning to do that. <laughs> sorry oh about that. Like I was excited. Oh, she has something to say. <laughs> well, it's great information that you're giving. So I really appreciate it. But okay. uh, sorry, I've, I've accidentally done that. <laughs> well, that's okay. You can do it if you want to now. <laughs> okay, so um, let us talk about transportation now and, and i'll give you guys this handout i'll post it in the chat hopefully uh towards the end so um you'll have all this information you can go through at your own page. um for transportation remember that you have to get your camp whatever it may be from point a to point b and back again so um i have seen people and i admire them throw everything they need in a backpack and they hop on a bus and they bus to and from an event. That ain't me. And, you know, good on them that they can do that. Um, I personally have an event group that I travel with. Hi, Heidi. <laughs> and um, <laughs> we play Tetris packing my SUV, um, hopefully leaving room for us to sit in the car. <laughs> we share our costs and even our food is usually planned out and shared if it's longer than a day event. Um, so that enables us to do eventing on a different level than if we were going by ourselves. Some of us can't afford to go three, four, five events uh, on our own. So whatever way you find that it, it works for you, and your budget and your transportation, um, there's a way to work it out. A lot of people, uh, you know, and here is huge. It goes across the border. It goes up into Alberta. It goes, it's, it's really big. And a lot of times I'll see, especially from Lionsgate, I'll see people posting, uh, hey, I'm going over to the island and I've got two seats in my car. Does anybody want, uh, need a ride and share costs? So I find that that is a really cool way. You get to know people better. You can have a lot of fun, especially if you're getting lost and you need somebody with good app experience to give you directions. Um, Find what works for you and don't be shy about putting it out there. Hey, I'd really like to go to such and such an event. Is anybody going? Does anybody have room for one? Um, it's a lot of fun to travel with other people. Um, it's great if you can go on your own, but it's a lot of fun to have a group that you go with too. Whatever works for your budget is A-OK -okay for SCA camping. How we doing so far? Anybody have any questions? Keep going. Um, okay, we're on to garb, camping garb. Um, you don't want to have just port garb if you are camping um, <laughs> in a rainy, muddy uh, time of year and court is going to be held outside because the people that will have coverage will probably be 
whoever's holding court and not not the rest of us. So um, you want to you want to have simple garb, but don't mistake that for plain. So um, you want to make sure number one, you got to remember you're dressing in a tent. So, you know, putting on 52 layers in a tent is going to be frustrating in itself. Um, a lot of us will keep on our first layer and that's going to be what we sleep in because it's just easier. So, you know, say you're, you're wearing Norse clothing and you've got your, your underdress and your apron dress and your cloak or whatever, everything comes off and, and you sleep in the underdress or your sh chemise, whatever you have. Um, be careful of the types of fabrics that you bring, um, if, especially if there's open fire. Uh, if you've got those big drapey sleeves and it happens to be polyester and you go winging by the campfire, you know, you're going to be uh, heading off to the hospital with your medical list in your wallet uh, fairly quickly. So um, you want to be have common sense, make sure you're using the right fabrics. Um, court costumes are for court. Look at um, middle class clothing for your period. Um, because when you think about it, even nobility uh, wore something simple for everyday stuff. They only, they only got fancy when they had to impress people. Um, remember that your clothing is, you're going to be wearing it for the entire event. Uh, you're going to be out in the dust, dirt, or mud. Um, and Coastal Land here is quite well known for its uh, share of wet and muddy events. You'll need to clean your garb uh, following most events. Um, a good tip for ladies is to make the hems of your camping gowns slightly shorter than you would for court attire. Um, if you sweep, <laughs> and this is so true, if, you, if you're dragging on the ground, if your hem is dragging on the ground, uh, it's going to be uh, giving you quite the collection of twigs, uh, grass clippings uh, piling up in your tent from your skirt. Uh, it makes cleaning your garb a nightmare. And I have found, um, because I'm shrinking in my old age, so my, my underdresses are longer than they used to be, but I find that it wears the bottom of the hem out really quick as well. And um, I don't really want to be making new garb every year. So um, just make them a little bit shorter so that they're not dragging on the ground and it'll save you a whole bunch of work down the road. Um, so for fabrics, you want to use natural fibers or blends, uh, not pure synthetics. Uh, for a couple reasons. Natural fibers breathe better, obviously, than synthetics. So um, they will help keep you cooler or warmer, depending on the weather. Um, and they obviously look more period. Um, the best fabric for staying warm and dry is obviously wool. Uh, if you're worried about wool being itchy, just put another fiber between it and you. So, you know, line it, or if it were a cloak, you could line it. Uh, if it were an outer dress, just have an underdress underneath it. Um, wool is naturally water repellent. So even if it is wet, it will still keep you warm, which is why wool socks are always so good and handy to have. Um, in fact, we keep extra wool socks in, in our camp bag for sleeping at night because the last thing you want to do is have your head and your feet cold. Um, linen is another really good fabric. Uh, it's both warm and cool. It's super absorbent. It dries really fast and um, it gets softer the more you, you wash it, the more you clean it, the softer it gets. So it makes lovely uh, undergarments as well. Um, a cloak. So you've got your outerwear. Now, uh, what do you need for uh, protection? You need a cloak of some sort. Um, heavy wool or other water repellent 
type fabric. Um, the cloak doubles also as a blanket. So um, they're, they were pretty popular uh, back in the medieval days for that purpose. You could just lay down on the ground and roll up in your cloak and, and have a good sleep. Um, when your head and your shoulders are protected, obviously it's easier to stay warm. And um, your cloak can also double as an umbrella or sunshade, a pillow if you need to roll it up. Um, the the uh, Army Surplus and Hudson's Bay blankets can be made into really nice cloaks. Uh, so, and I see a lot of wool blankets for sale on buy and sell sites all the time. So um, if you are in the market for a wool cloak, sometimes if you post in your Shire, Barony, uh, Principality uh, that you're looking for a cloak, some people hoard the blankets and they might be willing to part with them. So if you are looking for one, uh, which you should have one if you are SCA camping, uh, just post around and ask if you can't find one. Um, waterproof boots and shoes. So there's, there's um, obviously it's essential that your feet stay dry. Uh, I don't see a lot of people complaining that um, during the muddy, rainy season, some of us are wearing Crocs and waterproof boots uh, rather than wearing, you know, the the sandals with the bare feet to match our garb and getting cold, wet, and muddy in the process. So the bottom line is your comfort and your health. So uh, just. It is really good to have a pair of waterproof something with you, even if you're getting up in the middle of the night and trudging off to the, the bathroom, uh, the ground can be damp and dewy. So you wanna keep your feet dry at all costs. Uh, having multiple pairs of wool socks helps with that because uh, you, even though your wool socks are wet, your feet are still warm, but get them off and put uh, dry ones on as soon as you can. Uh, having your extra socks in baggies will prevent them from getting damp in your tent as well. So um, ensure that your footwear, so if you're taking uh, your waterproof footwear, ensure that there's room enough for you to have two pairs of socks on, uh, should it be a rainy event. Uh, don't forget a hat or a veil to protect yourself from the sun or the or the rain. Uh, UV rays are awful, and uh, you want to make sure you keep that off your head. You don't want sunstroke. Uh, you want to stay healthy and enjoy your event. So your clothing, uh, your headwear, your footwear, all those things are going to keep you more comfortable. So be really conscientious when you're when you're deciding what you are and are not going to take as far as your your clothing for an event. Um, <laughs> a sleeping cap is really helpful to keep the heat from escaping your body through the night. Um, I've seen both. I've seen people with toques on. I've seen sleeping caps. Um, but the wool socks are what I like the best. Um, okay, so now we're thinking about what am I gonna sleep on? Uh, there's numerous options. Obviously some people can wrap up in that cloak and sleep right on the ground. I am not one of those people. Uh, I have a cot. I find that my cot is much better with one of those um, thermopads on it. So it's like a self-inflating uh, thing that you open it up and it gets air and it keeps my cot really comfy. Um, a wool blanket underneath that pad uh, helps keep the cold air from seeping up underneath. So um, the, the wool blanket is good for a cot. It's also good for one of those air mattresses. Uh, an air mattress should also have a tarp underneath it as well. So um, the tarp, the blanket, 
uh, between you and the mattress will help keep that cool air from seeping up because no matter how nice it is during the day, uh, the evenings uh, on the West Coast especially can be damp and cool. So um, that extra uh, insulation between you and the ground will make a difference on how comfortable your night is. Um, those air mattresses have a danger of overnight deflation. So when you're thinking about how am I going to be comfortable, because your sleep is going to be important, you're having full busy days, um, just think about, okay, what would work for me? Would I be a cot person, an air mattress person, or am I just braving it on the ground? Or, you know, am I just saying all to the wind and getting a tent trailer? Um, just remember that if you are sleeping in a tent, no matter what you're using, for your body to sleep on, you're gonna need that insulation underneath you, uh, the tarp, the wool blanket, whatever it takes to keep that dampness from seeping up in, into your bones. Um, there were some good tips on um, open cell foam uh, are those foamies, uh, they're soft, they're cheap, but they're really bulky for packing. So if you're thinking about uh, how much room you have, that's probably not the kind of uh, foamy you want. Uh, they also absorb water. They're like a sponge. So they need to be on a really well-protected plastic ground sheet. Um, the closed cell foam is the blue pads or insulate they're not as soft as the open cell foam, but they are watertight. They roll up really small. Uh, they don't require a ground sheet, but I, it's a good idea to have, have one anyways. And you can double layer those if you find that it's not soft enough, but remember that that doubles the cost and the packing volume if you do that as well. So now you're thinking, what am I sleeping in? Are you sleeping in a tent trailer, a travel trailer, or out in the fresh air? This determines many things about your SCA camping experience. Um, as us SCAers get older, uh, <laughs> we tend to move from the uh, on the ground and then from in the tent to the tent trailer or the travel trailer. Um, we're, we're after comfort. <laughs> Um, some SCRs have lovely hand-painted authentic tents and encampments. Others have uh, from small little pup tents to three-bedroom behemoths. Um, so I've seen some beautiful little Vardo trailers, uh, just all kinds of, there's all kinds of different things at an event. And it goes back to uh, what I was saying before that you should never feel obligated to uh, have to go outside your budget just to feel like you fit in because there's just such a variety of, um, of camping sites, camp sites, camps, uh, that all that's really important is that you're there, you're having a good time, and you're learning as you go. Any questions? Hey, you're coming up on halfway if you want to use that as a good spot to take a 10 minute break, let people go pee. <laughs> you guys want to go coffee. pee? You guys want a pee break? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Response requested. Nobody's responding. Why don't we just say, take five minutes, go get something to drink, unload your bladder, whatever you need. Okay. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So you guys, five minutes. Go see pee you back up. here. Huh? I'll see you back here. Okay. Well, I'm not really going to go anywhere, but I'll be here. I'll turn my video okay. on. Okay. See, there you go.
Yay! <laughs> yeah. Here we are. We can't wait to go camping. <laughs> We, can, we can't go camping without Neil of the apps because how would we get to and from the site without him telling us? Exactly. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, he, he wants you to know that he likes wool socks too. Those are his favorite too. Oh, aren't they the best? Right? Exactly. Yeah. They are the best. Not the other morning when you get up. I don't know if we can have coffee. It's not period. No, make it period. <laughs> Yeah, make it period. That's right. Chai What's that persona again? <laughs> you gotta be you can be Turkish. Oh, there you go. You mm -hmm. have to be Turkish. In Newfoundland in the medi medieval times, we had coffee. In Newfoundland in the medieval times, you were uh, you were Norris, were you? Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Yeah, coffee too. <laughs> yeah, so we're um can't have any coffee. I actually, um, I forgot to bring two pairs of wool socks to one. It was a day event too, I think. No, it was an overnight event. And um, I had been walking around in my little rubber shoes with my wool socks and they, I was soaking wet. My socks got soaking wet and I got these huge blisters on my feet because I never changed them. Oh, yikes. Yeah. So I, I will never, ever forget my extra socks again after that. <laughs> so, we'll see. We might just have to come and camp under your tree. I think that's the only way we're going to camp this year. I know, right? No. Oh, well. Yeah. Oops. Oh, I lost everybody. Oh, there you are again. Oh. <laughs> There you are. Oh, excuse me. Oh. Did you want to see what I'm doing? What are you doing? <gasps> yeah, I'm not binding a thing. You're always doing something. No, no, no. But often when I'm on these, I'm doing something. Them all excited and expired. Have you washed? Inspired. Have you washed your fabric yet? No, not yet. I am um, not in love with that blue and yellow. Oh, yes. Oh my gosh. Well, I hope it works for what I'm going to use it for. But it's all in the interest of <laughs> sewing science, right? <laughs> oh, that's look at everything. <laughs> the one I I really want to do is the um is the gray that's the one i really want to get my my little shears into good camping I have that's a good camping outfit oh yeah yeah i was thinking that when you were talking about that i'm like oh i can shorten that hem just a little yeah okay um that's five minutes so i just want to check and make sure everybody's back no no worries i just no no it's fine <laughs> um um one thing i didn't do at the beginning which um i like to do um uh with my little brief interruption or uh, introduction of to, uh, Miminka there was to also acknowledge that um, the land that uh, Lionsgate is on um, is the Musqueam, uh, Coast Salish, uh, Tsleil-Waututh and Kwantlen um, unceded territories. Um, and um, if you're not in those areas, uh, find out whose unceded territory you're on. <laughs> If you are, we, uh, the we are the Skohomish. We're oh, right. the main oh. the Skohomish people. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. And thank you to Lionsgate and thank you to Tudor for setting this up for us. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, if people would like to get um, Tudor credit, that's the University of Tiri uh, credit for this. I have posted um, the link for the registration in the chat. And I will also post a link to the feedback, um, the student feedback for the course. Um, and I'll post that link um, closer to the end if people wanted to um, give feedback to the course and let us know how it goes. Okay, thank you, Monica. take it away. Okay, so um, just to wrap up uh, the, 
the sleeping stuff. Um, your choices are determined by your budget, your desire to be as authentic as you like, or that might not be your priority. Uh, if you have a disability or not, the point that uh, I try to make to you all is that no one's going to judge you. Uh, it's your choice and your choice alone as to what your encampment looks like for your best needs. Okay, so uh, with that in mind, a few things that you need to consider uh, will go back to the tent. So how much room do you think you need to dress and undress and store everything that you've brought? Um, if you've got, you know, a, a full German thing that you got to put on, uh, maybe that little pup tent that you have to be on your knees on is going to gonna do the right thing for you. And you might need to rethink that option. Um, a two person tent is never good for two people. Uh, a four to six person tent is best for one to two people, as well as uh, for storing your stuff, uh, uh, clothing and a small table. Uh, using a cot, I am able to um, put my totes underneath my cot, which really helps with space. And I always have a little end table and I have two, two cots in my tent and I have a six to eight person tent. Uh, insta-tent insta and I throw something on the top of it so it doesn't look so mundane. Um, so that's where you first start off with, do I want a mundane uh, or an authentic tent? So like I said earlier, an authentic uh, can start with a made over pop-up or umbrella um, uh, if that's what your desire is but your budget is short, that's a really good place to start. Um, if you have a camping group that forms an encampment, uh, consider the setup with the mundane tents towards the back of the encampment and the more authentic in the front for aesthetic purposes. Uh, and you'll see this a lot at big events. Uh, they'll have the mundane tents towards the back and the more authentic ones in front. So when you're walking down the row, uh, you see all the beautiful authentic tents in the front. That's just how, how it gets done. Um, regardless of the type of tent that you choose, uh, you're going to need to consider shade, a cooking area, socializing area, et cetera. So uh, pop-ups are great for this. It's super easy to toss a piece of fabric or sheet over it, um, add dagging to make it attractive and periodish. Um, for a camping party of four to six, two pop-ups is, uh, is sufficient. I find um, one is for socializing and your fire pit and one is for the kitchen area. Uh, for safety purposes, visible flags. So like fabric strips or small battery operated lights on the tent ropes uh, is helpful for accident prevention, especially at 3 a.m. when you're leaping out to head to that bathroom. Um, you'll be thankful that somebody marked those uh, ropes so that you don't trip on them. Um, canvas retains and reflects heat better than nylon. Uh, it looks more period, but it may be a little heavier. So you, you'll have to take that into consideration if you have limited space or don't own your own car. Um, nylon requires the same care as canvas. So the biggest thing about that is uh, never packing it away wet. Uh, no matter what your tent is, uh, no matter what your gear is, uh, with any camping experience, when you get home, you do is uh, roll everything out and make sure it's really well dried before you pack it away. Uh, opening up your thing for the next event to mold is not fun. And uh, make sure you get every little bit of food in there because a little piece of rotten apple really smells crappy after two months. Don't know how I know that. Um, most SEA events will have a separate area for uh, tent trailers, trailers, motorhomes, that kind of thing. Uh, 
a lot of it's due to it's it's not due to oh my god you have a trailer you can't come on the ground a lot of it is due to the ground itself so um it might be suitable for tents but it might not be suitable for a heavy travel trailer or tent trailer so you'll always see those uh at a separate designated spot uh at fca um uh, if if that's what you have remember to check on the event copy to find out where exactly you need to be if that's what your your uh camp gear is always take along extra tarps uh, that's just common sense. Take a extra sheets or fabric to show over to throw over chairs for a more period look. Always have extra tent pegs. Um, always have a fly for your tent if it's the nylon or light canvas. Um, if the fly touches the tent anywhere. Uh, that is when everything gets wet. So you want to make sure that your fly has that little gap of space between the tent and the fly itself. Um, when pitching your tent, you want relatively flat high ground. Um, if the only flat spot is a low dip, go for the slightly sloped, uh, the slightly sloped spot and put your head facing uphill so that you're not laying this way you want to be laying that way um if you camp in the low spot you're going to be in the bog or pond if it rains uh so uh you want to keep an eye out for that and remember when putting your stakes in that you put the stake in at 90 degrees to the rope not the tent for maximum hold does that make sense No questions. Okay. Um, always ask in advance uh, of the fire regulations. Is open fire a no no? Uh, is propane and fire pit okay? Uh, because sometimes those are not even acceptable. So it's really important you find that stuff out. Um, and if it is okay, remember to pack your propane. So that goes on your list, on your packing list. Um, Bathrooms and washrooms. Some SEA events have showers, others do not. Um, all of them have porta potties of some sort. I've seen really rustic, rustic outhouses and then actual porta potties that get brought in. Um, when you're setting up your encampment, you want to scope that out. You want to know where it's at, especially if you're that 3 a.m. got to go potty person. Um, for bathing, uh, camp, uh, camp sponge baths are handy, uh, but I would bring a second dishpan. I know some people will reuse their kitchen dishpan for their sponge. I kind of like to keep mine separate, uh, so I bring a separate pan for that, those plastic dishpans that you get at the dollar store, uh, because I don't like to wash my dishes in my bathtub. <clears throat> Um, I also always bring extra toilet paper because you never know in the outhouses what's going on out there. So um, sometimes those little uh, wipes are handy to have as well. Kind of a personal preference thing. Um, so how are we doing so far? Does anybody have any questions up to date? We're good. Okay. Safety and first aid. If you've never been camping before, uh, it's a really good idea to take along more clothing than you think you need. Uh, if you get cold, you can always add more clothing. And obviously, if you're too hot, you can strip down a couple layers. Um, if you want something to drink because you're cold alcohol will not do that for you uh, it numbs you to the cold but it doesn't warm you up uh, you're better off with hot cocoa to your coffee so alcohol becomes um it becomes a bit of an issue health-wise so it's not going to warm you up 
it's also going to uh, if you're drinking in the in the uh, when it's hot outside, you need a lot of water. So uh, ensure that you're just as prepared for hot weather as you are for the cold. So with your hot weather, you're going to make sure you have lighter garb, always some kind of hat, a sun hat, a veil, something. Uh, sunscreen and plain water are going to be your best friends in the hot weather. Uh, for health care, are you on regular medication? Have you got allergies to insect stings or anything else? Do you have ongoing medical conditions? Uh, someone and perhaps event medic as well uh, should be aware of your condition and know what to do in case of an emergency. So keep your first aid kit where it's readily available. And then I have a little bit of a uh, some things to include in your first aid kit are disinfectant soap, tweezers, nonstick gauze, uh, uh, the that telfa for cuts uh, for minor burns and blisters, uh, hypoallergenic tape, band aids, something for insect stings, band or uh, aspirin, EpiPen if you need it, uh, sunscreen and aloe. Um, I always recommend to have some kind of granola bar or glucose pills or something for, for low blood sugar. Um, and Tanique suggests if you haven't already, consider enrolling in a basic first aid course. It can't do any harm, it can only be helpful. Uh, but she also was reminding me that if someone refuses their your treatment, that they have a right to do so. So just because you have first aid training doesn't mean that people have to take your assistance. Uh, don't take it personal. Children, bringing children to events. So um, young people are obviously more affected by heat and cold uh, and they must be cared for uh, more carefully. They also need to stay really well hydrated uh, they need to be watched around open fires and other environmental hazards. Uh, make yourself and your children aware of any particular hazards at the site uh, that you're camping. Um, barbed wire, electric fences, hazardous plants, uh, creeks or streams, anything like that. Uh, please do not expect other people to mind your children unless you've made specific arrangements for them to do so. Uh, that's, that's a real thing. So prevention is best, be aware of the hazards, avoid them. Uh, a lot of SCA campers will put their badge or other identifying item on their children in case they do wander off. It allows for easier identification to get the child back safely where they belong. In the SCA, uh, we strive to be as medieval as possible in everything that we do. Um, the easiest way to make modern items that we can't do without fit into our medieval settings is to put them out of sight. So put them in your tent, throw a cloth or blanket over them, replace with period equivalent, whatever works for you. For the things that are too frequently in use or are very difficult to do this with, um, there's some suggestions. And it can be fun and creative uh, to get your medieval gear going. So, Many traditional style modern tents, especially the big canvas ones, are basically a period design anyways. So uh, if, you're, if you're out shopping and you see that they've got a canvas camp tent on sale at Canadian Tire for $190, uh, that's basically looking like an authentic medieval tent anyways. So, you know, that's, that's a good way to go if you happen to come across a deal like that. Uh, you can add a little fringe or uh, valance around the roof line and poof, you know, you've got an authentic tent sitting right there. Um, there's all kinds of inexpensive pennants that you, you can fly from, from the sides of your tent. I see them at all the 
the farmers markets and craft fairs, you know, different colors. Uh, they, they're they fun looking and they brighten everything up and they're very medieval. Um, you can put screens up in front of, you've got a, a mundane tent, you can actually hang up a fabric screen in front of it with, you know, do the little thing like this with curtains. And and uh, you've really made a, an awesome little entrance to your camp. Uh, you can paint tents, you can paint on, on canvas, you can, uh, some of the synthetics you can paint on. Uh, if you have your tent open a lot, hanging a tapestry at the door is a really cool idea to uh, to have an authentic look there. Uh, and it hides all your modern and personal items from people walking by as well. So um, keeping your coolers uh, in, a, in a box or under a rug help uh, to protect and insulate them and hide the, the modern cooler from, uh, from your authentic looking setting that you're making. Using cast iron to cook with is also very me medieval. Uh, wood, ceramic, uh, worry about your packing if you're packing ceramic stuff, um, metal, uh, utensils, throwing a tablecloth over your, your uh, folding table. Um, you could even find just some plain fabric and fabric stamp on it and make it super, super cute. And that is very medieval. Uh, you can do that with sheets and stuff that you find at the thrift store. So I'm not talking about that you have to spend a lot of money. You just use your imagination or uh, look on Pinterest for other ideas for a medieval camping. Uh, talk to Tanique or another SCA -er that's that's got a, a campsite that you envy. Go ask them how they started. What, what did they do? What can you do? They'll, they all have tips so um, and they're happy to talk about them. Um, you just build yourself an idea cupboard from everything that you see when you go to an event and, and uh, build, build up your wish list and start with things that are most important to you, if that's what you want to do. And then you go to modern versus period. Uh, some modern items are more practical uh, much less expensive and sometimes even safer than the equivalent. Um, so I gave you an example in the handout that a wooden water barrel is period, but a plastic one is lighter. It won't rot, rust, or harbor unwanted fuzzies or critters. So, um, you know, I would prefer the plastic over the wooden barrel in that, in that uh, situation. Although I've seen people build wooden barrels to put their plastic thing into. So it all, it's all on how much you want to, how much effort you want to put out into, into uh, making your camp authentic. Um, glasses are real, a real uh, good example of, yeah, they're not really period, but I like to see what I'm looking at. So of course we incorporate those into our SCA pers personas and nobody's gonna say a word about it because it's just the way it is. Um, those Coleman stoves uh, are safer on many occasions than hibachis or brazers. Uh, they don't take all weekend to get going. They don't need constant attention. So um, although it's, it's all well and good to endeavor to be as pure as possible. We can't uh, be expected to have everything perfect our first time out, or maybe even our 50th time out. Uh, there's limits to how much can be expected of those of us accustomed to the modern comforts and time-saving conveniences of the 21st century. Um, and we don't have an army of servants to do our work for us while we're basking about uh, drinking wine and eating grapes. So uh, there's many period items that are as good as or better than our modern ones. If you're not handy, uh, there might be something you have or can do in trade for someone who is. And that's another real SCA uh, 
thing, uh, we barter with each other. Oh, I'm really good at this and you're really good at that. You want to make a trade? I love your camp chairs, uh, but I'm really good at null binding. I could trade you a hat for a camp chair. Uh, you'd be surprised at how many people are, are willing to do that. Uh, so don't ever think that anything's out of reach. Um, all right, so uh, how can we make our campsite more homey and or medieval in feel? Um, a place to get started are banners, uh, for example, or standards. So there's a lot of people that can paint a banner. Uh, you can cut out your arms and sew them onto a banner or do a silk banner. What, whatever you choose to do, uh, hire somebody to do it for you, whatever, whatever works for you. Um, having a banner uh, is a nice addition that makes your camp look really period. Everybody knows that's you. Your arms are sitting there in front of your in front of your tent. They know it's you. It's they're really cute. They're fun. A um, lot of shires, baronies, principalities will have uh, classes that teach you how to make them. So check it, check out your with your ANS people and see if they're offering a class on banner making. And if not, suggest it and see if somebody is willing to take you up on that. Um, tables. So. Tables, uh, whether they're a card table, folding table, or trestle and board, it doesn't really matter. Tables are hugely important in your campsite because they uh, they they do so many things. So they're for meal preparation, they're for sitting down and eating, they're for socializing, playing a game, cooking, um, the project space. You need like a plastic card table can look perfectly period with a lovely embroidered tablecloth tossed over it. Um, and you would be surprised how many of these beautiful embroidered cloths you can find at the thrift store because that generation of people are aging out and younger generation uh, don't seem to be as interested in that kind of thing as as uh, as we might be. So you can find all kinds of beautiful treasures uh, at the thrift store that will enhance your camp space. Uh, chairs, you gotta have chairs. Uh, you use them for sitting in camp, watching the fighting. Uh, period benches and stools are super easy to build. If you're handy, there's all kinds of how to's online. Um, I personally don't have that. I have regular Coleman, fold out chairs with the little cup holder in them and I've got uh, fabric that I throw over them and I'm committed to making the actual slip covers this year but uh, so you don't have to have the wooden ones you could have the more the more modern ones that just make the effort to cover them up and make them look more period. Um, sun pavilion is your wallless tent uh, it's good for a sunshade. It's good for a rain roof. Uh, it's good to be for cooking underneath them, uh, having your evening socializing uh, underneath them. Um, although few period examples have been found of sun pavilions, uh, building the more commonly seen brush shelter at most SEA sites uh, is just not practical or possible. So we always use the pop-ups. Um, if you are thinking about period packing containers and you go with the wooden chests or boxes, those also double as seats. Uh, they double as a table, but remember they're heavy to load. So uh, you don't want to be picking that option unless you either have help or have lots of this on you. Um, baskets are lightweight for packing. They're convenient, inexpensive. Uh, but you got to keep them up off the damp ground. Uh, cloth, cloth bags are cheap and easy to make. You can squish them up and pop them into weird holes in the car when you're packing it, uh, but they're not appropriate for all kinds of items. So uh, my preference are the Rubbermaid totes. Uh, I've labeled them. I have lists taped to the lids. They stack neatly. And uh, it just enables me to Tetris better in my car. Um, if you have kids, uh, 
you want to make sure that they're enjoying their time at, at SCA camping as well. So you want them to have some period toys. And um, if you keep those toys special for the event, it, it makes it more special for them. So uh, things that are simple to make are like rag or straw dolls, wooden or cloth animals, uh, wooden carts, blocks, that kind of thing. Uh, because the kids really enjoy being medieval as well. Um, there are uh, different areas at an SCA campsite. Uh, so there'll be uh, the woohoo party people area and there's the people with the kids that they need to have their kids down by six, seven o'clock. So this is another bit of information that you can get from the event steward or on the event copy. They'll have a map of the campground and usually they'll have the quiet area marked off. I don't think they ever mark off the noisy area, but they, they do mark off the quiet area. And so if you don't want to be kept awake till three o'clock by 4,000 verses of 99 bottles of beer on the wall, you're going to want to be over in that quiet area. So that's important to check that out uh, where you're going to put up your site. Uh, oh, some do mark both. Okay, perfect. Um, there, a lot of events now, they're so big on, on youth events or youth, uh, youth things. Uh, so uh, check if you have kids, you've got their, their special toys, you've got food for them. Uh, check and see what youth activities are going on for them at their age group. See if there's any um, craft classes going on or fighting classes or, you know, there's so many things for youth activities now in the SCA. Uh, if you have kids, to keep them involved and keep them interested. You know, the, it'll make your camping experience better if they're having a good time as well. And remember uh, about pets, you want to check in advance make sure it's a pet friendly site or not. Uh, be considerate of your pets. Um, they're traditionally expected to be on a leash or restrained at all times and obviously expected that you clean up after them. So um, you've gone through the event, uh, you've had a great time, now it's time to put everything away. Why doesn't everything fit in the car the same way it did when I brought it here? It, it, it never will. and. I find that the, the um, packing up happens 10 times faster than the packing to go to the event. The, the, everything just at the end, the event seems to get thrown in the car all willy nilly, uh, but which, which is okay because you're gonna unpack your car when you get home and separate everything and dry it out anyway. So uh, don't think that, that uh, that's not normal. Uh, the SCA has a reputation for leaving sites cleaner than we found them. And we're very proud of that fact. Uh, and we should all be proud of that. It only takes a few minutes to patrol your campsite with your garbage bag in hand after the car is packed up. Um, and that is how we get invited back to um, nice, nice spots for our events. Uh, remember that that garbage bag is going with you. So um, if you've disposed of all your other garbage from the event and you've got that one last one and you're grabbing all the last minute stuff, you want to do that last so that it's at the easiest spot to reach in your car. So that when you go by the garbage bin, you can open up your car, take that out and toss it, or it's going home with you, whatever the case may be. You don't want to have to dig for that last bit of garbage. Um, when you get home, as soon as you can, uh, go through your list of forgotten things because you've made a list. Oh, I forgot this, I forgot that. Um, add them to the right list uh, or into the storage container for next time. And it's important to do it while the event's still fresh in your mind so that you don't forget. Um, it saves you time and energy in the long run to do it right away rather than to wait because if you forget again, you're not going to be happy with yourself. Make sure that you uh, clean 
and repair any equipment before packing it away. Uh, you don't want to forget about that either. If you had a little tear in something, you want to make sure you mend it then. You don't want to open up your tent at the next event and go, oh, I forgot all about that. And now you've got to spend time fixing that. So um, pillow covers, sleeping bag, bag liners, all that stuff needs to be washed uh, before you pack it away. Um, don't store your liner inside the sleeping bag. Uh, pack them together, but store them separately. This is when you would make uh, repairs to garb. You've snagged your arm on something or armor, um, all while it's still fresh in your mind. Uh, that way you're not making emergency fixes at the next event or uh, like a lot of us up till 3 a.m. the night before doing battle sewing at the last minute. Um, and last but not least, clean your tent. Uh, it may not need it after every event, but you should at least clean it, I think, a couple times a year, but at the very least once a year. Um, wash it down, uh, use mild dish soap on it, uh, really get it nice and clean and dry it thoroughly. Um, I was not joking about that little stupid piece of apple that my daughter had left in one of those weird little pockets. And after six or seven months of it being packed away, it just, it had the most god awful smell. I could never use that tent again. So um, that cleaning thing is really important. Um, if you have a tent that has waterproofing on it, at the end of the season is a good time to redo that waterproofing. Um, and remember, even if it's just dusty, you want to clean that tent. You don't, you don't, if you pack them away dirty, they're going to get wear and tear on them and they're just not going to last as long. So it's really important uh, to take, take good care of your equipment that you're going to use for your camping experience. Um, the last thing I want to talk about, and I maybe should have mentioned it first, but, um, gate, when you go to an SCA event, uh, there's gate where you go and you pay for the event. And, uh, nowadays, I guess we're, we'll be signing in, uh, whatever the, whatever it looks like in today's world. Um, just remember that gate is not open 24 seven. So if you arrive on site before someone is attending at gate, uh, please ensure that you go back and uh, sign in when you're able to, uh, because we take people at their word. Uh, plus all the valuable information uh, about the event is gonna be found there. The event copy, the garbage disposal info, water info, the site layout, uh, lost and found, uh, everything that you need to know about the event is going to be found at GATE. Um, and most importantly, treat everybody's campsite with respect. Uh, it's, it's considered rude in the SCA to walk through someone's campsite without asking because that's like walking through their house. Um, your campsite is your home for the duration of the event. And so you would want to treat other people's homes just like you would like your home to be treated. Uh, common courtesy is, it goes a long way. And uh, remember that SCA people are friendly and helpful by nature. They're always willing to help out and give suggestions, uh, whether you want them or not sometimes. Uh, they trade favors. Uh, we all want each and every one of you to have such an enjoyable experience that you keep coming back for more. So learn from our mistakes, uh, ask for advice, reach out to any of us. Uh, we are always uh, willing to lend a hand to grow and better our society. And we wish you happy, happy eventing. So that's what I have for you. And now we have time for general conversation. So um, who can, can you guys all hear me? I'd, I'd like to start with Margaret. And um, can you unmute yourself, Margaret?
How about Robin? Can you unmute yourself, Robin? Yeah. There we go. Okay, so Robin, what did you learn? What would you, what did you, didn't you hear that you would like to have heard something about? Um, I haven't done a ton of camping in a, I haven't done camping in a while or uh, since I was kind of, you know, a, a teen, so kind of getting a lot of the recovering some of the basics. And I guess I hadn't quite put together that like, yeah, they still make canvas tents. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, they still just do that. They do, yes. Um, you can get them, there's um, Panther Pavilions makes uh, period tents, but you can get a camp tent at Canadian Tire made out of canvas. Um, is, is there something that um, that you were specifically looking for that did or did not get addressed? I guess a lot of what I was uh, hoping to get was like kind of SCA camp culture, which um, I think you I think you went over pretty well. Um, I guess one thing I would think about, uh, would want to know a bit more about is um, a lot of the times events, like there's only listed events happening on one day, even though like the campsites open the two days around, how much do people tend to um, hang out, like how much socializing is there for the Saturday, Friday night and Sunday morning of a Saturday event? There, it well, depending on the event, um, there's usually something going on all the time socially. So if an event is like um, a Saturday, Sunday event, uh, but people arrive on Friday, uh, chances are people come in on Friday, they get camp set up and you're gonna find if you walk around the campsite, there's going to be some kind of socializing going on on the Friday night, but it usually won't be organized. It'll be whoever's there uh, because people can come in quite late to set up camp. Um, Saturday and Sunday, even though most of the events usually take place on a Saturday, uh, there will still be stuff going on on the Sunday morning, even if they're pickup fights or um, uh, squire attorneys, or uh, there could even be some uh, ANS stuff going on. Um, socializing, the organized socializing will all be on the event copy. So a lot of times they might have Eric parties, or uh, they might have children's reading sessions with the queen or queen's tea. Um, so it really depends on the event. And the best thing to do to find that stuff is to talk to the event steward and make sure you've got the event copy. If there's certain culture, SEA camping culture that, that um, you're interested in, I'm sure that Tanit could connect with you at another time and go into more depth with her uh, her experiences and research that she's doing on SCA camping, if that's something you'd like. Um, yeah, and, and all that stuff will be in the event copy. It should be listed. Um, and, you know, there's all kinds of sort of random stuff that just happens at events. You can usually find something going on somewhere. Mm -hmm. Don't don't be afraid to um, to talk to people. You can also look for the chatelaine. Um, and quite often they're willing to help you out too. At an event. That's very true. Um, Kelly. Well, I think the information that you've given is excellent. 
The only thing that I would uh, question is if you have a list of all the stuff that you've gone over today that we can use as a checklist before we go to an event. Uh, I am going to try to put something in the chat. I'm not sure how, but I'm going to try. Hmm. I will try. Did you have any other? Um, if that's not working for you, Maminka, um, people can contact me. Uh, it'll be Joanne Burroughs here. I'll put my my name in the uh, in the chat here. Um, this is how you find me on Facebook, and I can send you a copy of the uh, of the handout if Maminka can't get it to load. That would be great. Thank you so much. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out how I can do that. Heidi, darling. Yes. Do you have anything that you didn't get information on or? No, I think it's one of those things that I've let it wash over me. We've done some camping before. I'm really interested in trying to do the little hacks and the camouflages to make it look more, more fun, you know, fun. But I'm sure on my first camping trip, there's going to be a million questions that I have. And I'll be that person standing at, oh, how'd you do that? How'd you hide this? How'd you do that? <laughs> it's going to be fun. Yeah. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Okay, well, I'm going to turn off the recording and then we can just have sort of a chat if people would like to do that. Oh, Perfect. Stop.